Three o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, first order, then I would like to welcome and introduce Nancy Anderson. If you could, I know this is the worst part of it, but if you could just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and background. Okay. Um, my name is Nancy Anderson. I'm an attorney at Morgan and Morgan here in Columbus. Um, I've lived in Columbus just about my whole life. And um, I'm very passionate about animals. I have four dogs, one cat, and a bearded dragon. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Well, yes. Uh, next on the agenda, we do have the approval of minutes. These are actually going to be um, two separate minutes. One um, from the June 13th meeting. I do understand that there was um, inaccuracies and there were uh, changes has to be made probably after we have those. Yeah, yeah, but what what have been what uh, was sent out recently includes the questions and answers that uh, Ch uh, Shannon was looking for as far as I know. I haven't heard back from her. But, uh, I think that's what she was asking for. So I think as amended they can be good. But uh, I don't know anything else she was looking for. Um, She did say... Was it the one with, with the euthanasia? Is that right, one she right. was at? Because that wasn't in the original. That was in November. So we didn't vote for those. No, originally. she, in the November is when she asked for the... The extra question. The, yeah, okay. about the previous meeting, which was June. Okay. I believe. So, but we have the answers in the in the minutes for June 13th, what was passed out. So we don't need to vote for an amendment because we didn't approve these minutes before because they were missing. Right. So the amended right. minutes we can approve. So I want to make sure I'm getting that straight in my head. So these are amended from? The first time the 13th was sent out, the uh, June was sent out because they weren't, they weren't in there the first time. And that's what Shannon was asking about. Am I understanding that right? No, she was I asking about it from the last yeah. meeting, right? Right. That's my right. understanding, the the minutes from the 13th of June were not voted, were not voted on, on at all. Right, right. And so you didn't, did they see the minutes? Yeah, I sent the minutes back. But they were not voted on. Right. Yes. So was in it? the meeting, she, the, she had asked right. for inclusion of the conversation about the um, the euthanizing of animals. That's, that's right. what, and that has been put in. And because it was never voted on, yeah. there's no need for an amendment. No, no, it right. wasn't put in. Yet. Right. It wasn't that's, put what in. Okay. that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. No, it wasn't put in yet. Shannon asked a question at the next meeting on the right. ninth. She that's asked right. questions about Parvo, and I told her if she wanted to make an amendment to the minutes that was on the thirteenth inclusion of the conversation, then she needed to make a motion at this meeting for it. So I guess that's what she's asking you to do. Okay. Well, they squared away on that. I guess I'm a little confused. So she had a question about uh, Arvo and how the procedures for Arvo, whether or not we have anything in place, and can you state what the procedure? I think that's, that's she's on the agenda to talk about that. We're just talking about the these minutes now, so she was asking me to make a motion for these to be changed. Okay. Yeah. Make a motion for these to be changed. To be changed. What do you want changed in those minutes? Amended. Now, I thought it was to get these questions and answers in. There. That's what I was understanding. Is that what you're understanding? Um. I'm confused about the back and forth with this. Conversation about the euthanization yes. questions. Yes. Okay. She did say it will show that we 
I need a second for that motion. Second. second. You said it will show what we were told that we don't receive sedation before. before. And then the second portion of that is the Oh, person to vote. Each person. Sorry. <laughs> Jumping ahead. All in favor of amending the minutes? I wasn't there, so I don't know that. Okay. She was officially amended. She wasn't. So we'll just take the ones that were present. Okay. And I show Show up hands again one more time. So what happens is those calls that we get from citizens advising that there's a dog roaming in the area, um, those are considered unattended animals and unless we later find out that they are or belong to someone else. Okay. And, um, or if they do belong to someone else, 
we give them a citation, and then they appear in court and they have to pay those fines associated with that. And the largest amount of that total was other. Can you give me an example of other? Because that's twelve thousand um, dollars. Comes off the top of your head. Okay. Yes. Um, those were actually the fines for cruelty. Um, those start at five hundred dollars. Okay. Um, and can go up to it was like twenty five hundred. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of those cases. Um, Forty seven. Yeah. Um, hindrance. Well, hindrance. Um, Contempt of court. Mm -hmm. So all, all that. Yeah. All of those are determined by the court. Okay. So that's they're not any that we impose. Judge uh, Henderson. Once they come into court, Judge Henderson, she will impose those yeah. other fines that are outside of, yeah, of our, our citations. Okay. And how are we doing on follow-ups as far as the percentage of what needs to be done in NAMI or actually executed? Because that's really important. So follow-ups are determined or at the discretion at, of our officers based on the type of call they went right. to. So follow-ups most of the time will be for those that we've given them a warning about the cleanliness of their um, pens. Mm -hmm. We'll give them a certain amount of time to get that done. We'll go back usually within seven to ten um, days. Um, that also we will have a follow-up if it's an um, animal that is improperly tethered. We will give them an opportunity to correct that. So anything that our officers don't necessarily need to cite um, a citizen for, but giving them an opportunity to correct is when we do that, and we do follow that up. Um, 100% of the time. Um, Very good. I just kind of want to follow that up with uh, their officers are also working with Pauses Outreach Team. So um, there's a lot of crossover there. Um, if there's an issue and it's, it's a member of our community that just needs some extra help, then uh, Pauses Outreach Team will, will reach out to them or they or that citizen will reach out to us um, to get the supplies that they need. So. Any other questions, comments? Eighteen percent, eighteen point one percent euthanization rate for the year. Not real good. Well, keep in mind that number also includes those that are requested. We break down the euthanasia by that of space, as well as those that are requested by the owner or due to an illness for those animals that come in. So the, that is a collective number, but we do have a breakdown based on space. It might be um, useful to have a breakdown on those on a normal uh, basis in order to understand how many we need to be saving. In other words, the ones that are requested are by law required to do that, and the ones that are sick can't do anything about that if they're that mm -hmm. far gone. <clears throat> but the other ones that are healthy and happy, those are the ones we have a chance to save, and those are the ones we need to have an accurate number on to, so, to know where we stand and more, know what we need to strive for. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Now it also, it says euthanized died. I mean, does that mean that some, I mean, that includes animals that passed away just in the care, not necessarily just euthanized. Correct. So it is a collector. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, we had some babies to come in that were, they came in sick and they didn't make it the next morning. We do have to count that in our numbers as well. Sure. Well, this is not including the calls for dead animals or anything like that. You know, that's no, that's a separate. separate. Thing. Is there a way to do a separate line for the healthy animals? I mean, I do think that makes it a little bit more transparent to be able to see. Now, we do have an extensive report that we actually separate all of them out. 
Um, I don't think we have it in here today. Generally, it's on the website. It is on the website, and it's though. On the links. So the links that you received in the email uh, prior to there, if you click on that link, it will give you the actual breakdown of those animals that were um, euthanized due to their own request, those that died because they were sick when they came in, mm -hmm. and those that we did euthanize for space. So there is a way of There is. Okay. There is a breakdown. It's just okay. it's on the website um, in that link, and we just didn't bring that print out. Uh, today. It's and it's been larger. there. It's much, much large. It is much larger than this. Yeah, so. The last 15 years. So there is a there is a complete breakdown of that. Okay. Thank Um, while this isn't on our um, agenda, um, we do have and need to talk about and, and vote. Um, we have a tentative financial advisory board quarterly meeting scheduled for 2024. Um, just want to make sure this works for everybody um, and we can um, move forward with this. So if, if you would, just find this paper here that we'll give it to you. Um, I know it's kind of hard to think about until December, but um, if anything jumps out of at you, it's not going to work for you. Then. Let me know. Wait, it says Thursday, March 15th. That's actually the 14th. Or would you do it on a Friday? You would do it on a Thursday. We would do it on a Thursday. All right, that's the 14th. Yeah, we'll change that. Uh, the 20th. 20th is the 30th, Thursday. I think all these might be the day. Are these are all the day? Are these the day? Well, I'm on 24. I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go Let me get to September. Yep, Thursday is the 19th. The 19th, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are all the day. And then June is the 20th? Oh, we'll Correct. just need a little okay. copy. And there's the 19th. So it will change yeah. anything for me. Okay, Courtney, go ahead and talk and tell the state. Um, so, yeah, they're all a day, a day on it. So, yeah, so it would be March 14th, June 20th, September 19th, and December 19th. No, it would be at 3 p.m.? Yes, we time. time and oh. location is to be determined. Okay. Yeah, we alternate most of the time, I think, right back and forth between early in the day and evening. Well, because it's recorded now, it has to be at 3 o'clock. Oh. But we just don't know the location yet. Gotcha. But the time may change, just depending on what they have. Okay, gotcha. Motions for approval? Yep. For the dates? Yeah, for the dates. Okay, yeah. yeah. Second. Second. Okay. Mm -hmm. And vote. Yeah. Okay. Force All right. Um, huh? We are changing that today. Yes. Uh, there is a need for a chair. Um, my uh, term has come to an end, so we do need uh, to uh, to nominate a new uh, chairperson today um, and vote on that person. Um, I'm going to make a nomination for Julie Fryer. Um, Second. Certainly, anybody else is welcome to throw another name in the hat. But Got your newbies, yeah. not ready for you? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Do I make a motion for Julie? Second. Make a motion. All those in favor? Yeah. All those in favor? Don't be looking at me. <laughs> Pull you right back in. Be fine. And Julia, I assume that's agreeable with you. Yeah. Now, I'll pass it over to Kanita. 
Thank you. 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 We can't go over them. What we did add, uh, just so that everyone is, is uh, current on what was requested, we did add the um, excused, unexcused, unexcused absences and the process that you would have to go through um, that would happen in the event that you missed more than three. That was an update. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, officers, the election of chairpersons, and the introduction of the uh, chair pro tem. The chairperson shall appoint this person in that position. And that response and the responsibility of the pro tem is to serve as the chairperson um, in the absence of the chairperson or uh, if there is an agenda item that the chairperson is not participating in, the pro, the pro tem will serve in that space. Okay. <clears throat> Meetings, uh, it was changed. Uh, it did originally say there were only two meetings a year. It has been changed quarterly. And I believe at the request, okay. And there has been added a, a public agenda. Each guest will have to submit uh, their request <clears throat> two week, at least two weeks prior to the board meeting and will be given a five minute um, opportunity or five minutes to present unless extended by the majority of the Animal Control Advisory Board. In this, the chairperson shall have the discretion to reasonably limit, limit the length of or number of public presentations in the event the unusual length of business or time constraints require such limitations. On the agendas, a sign-in sheet will be prepared by the secretary for each meeting with the agenda items listed. Each board member will be required to sign in. If any board member has a conflict of interest, that board member will uh, excuse themselves in that voting item. That's a repeat of what was stated in the uh, <coughs> for the most part, anyway. Mm -hmm. Probably doesn't need to be in both places. <coughs> At the request of the chairperson, the professional code of conduct was added. If you'd like to take a moment to review those, because it was not in the last agenda, I'm sorry, last uh, draft. Um, if you'd like to change anything or add.
And then lastly, the amendments of bylaws. A copy of all proposed amendments to these bylaws shall be mailed by the secretary to each member of the board at least 10 days prior to the date in which the action is to be taken on the amendment. There are no questions or changes. I will submit these to the clerk of council. <clears throat> Next week. And that's just to give everybody an opportunity to go over them more closely. Yes. If there are any changes, please have them to me by the 26th of January, which is Friday, by close of business. Agenda is the public year uh, budget year recommendations um, submitted by uh, my office. Uh, as I mentioned in June, um, budget year recommendations we have deadlines this time of the year, um, and I have my deadline so that my boss I can meet my deadline. My boss has to have her deadlines, so forth and so on. And so I've already uh, provided my budget requests to um, my leadership team. Uh, I did give everyone the opportunity from June up until uh, December to submit to me any requests uh, that you would like to see added into the budget for this year. The same will hold true uh, ongoing. Even now, if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for budgets that you would like to see added in the animal control division, you can submit those to me, but just know that this upcoming budget year um, has already been done. I will be moving forward with next year, next budget year. Is everyone understanding? Mm -hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> I'll go over the things that I have requested. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, please stop me. I don't mind answering. Uh, the first thing that I did ask for was 5.5 animal control officers for my shelter staff. And if you weren't aware, animal control officers is their title, but their position is in the shelter. Okay. And these are the individuals that handle the impoundment of all animals that come through the door, whether they come off the truck or they come through our doors. They're the individuals that take care of the impoundment, the intakes, and that includes the administration of vaccinations and anything else that's relevant to the animal. Um, I requested 5.5 additional, uh, in a, and I'm asking that based on the National Animal <coughs> Control Association standards. Um, and that number is taken by the number of animals we intake on a year, yearly basis, and the number, uh, and it also is in line with cleaning and feeding. It does not include vaccinations. And so um, based on that number, uh, I've asked for 5.5 additional people. In other words, I'm asking for five people and a part-time person to help in that avenue. Likewise, with uh, the control officers, I'm to have, according to NACA, <clears throat> 1.6 people or, or persons Per district. Columbus has 10 districts. Therefore, I need 16 officers. Currently, I only have nine um, with an allotted or an approved number of 10. So I'll need additional six officers. Do you get complaints about the time it takes for you to? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we get complaints, concerns. Um, and I will tell you, one of the first things I noticed when I um, came into this role 
is at that time I only had four officers. Um, at that time, my officers only had a um, catch pole. And we deal with aggressive animals. And so their safety was my very first concern. Um, not so much getting to every single call, but the calls that they do get to, that they're safe in there uh, while they're there. And so I already knew that I needed additional people. I just didn't know the formula for it. And so I was able to find that. And so safety is a big, is a big concern for me, uh, for, my, for the officers. And then, of course, being able to get to all the calls in a timely manner. <clears throat> I've also requested a cruelty investigator in addition to the officers that I currently have. And the reason I've asked for that is because uh, we have, we've unfortunately had the opportunity to have to participate in investigating uh, criminal uh, allegations. And that is quite time consuming. We're able to do that but they're having, my officers that I currently have are having to do that on their, during extra time. Uh, they're either working overtime or they're taking time uh, on their off days to get these things accomplished. And we're working with different agencies, not just one another or with CPD. There are other agencies that we have to work with. And so I do need a person, uh, I feel, that is dedicated to um, investigative work in that, in that sense. I'm sorry, can I back up one of the uh, field services officers? How many do you have on staff now? Four or six? Or no, she's funded for nine, but when she came on, you only have four. five, four, four field and five vacancies. How many do you have right now? I currently have nine. Okay. 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 I'm requesting two maintenance workers. And um, I wasn't here, but Prior to, we used to have inmates that helped out with the cleaning of the shelter. Right now, I do not, I have a person that I, that's borrowed. He actually is assigned to another, another division within Public Works, but he is assigned to us right now. So I'm looking for my own maintenance workers so that we do have consistency in maintaining our runs. So I've asked for two of those. Um, I've also requested an assistant manager. It will be a new position. We do not have that currently. But this person will work in conjunction with the division manager, um, helping and managing the work as well as serving in the absence of the division manager. I'm also requesting a public relations coordinator. This position, um, as it is, as the title uh, suggests, will be responsible for creating and maintaining a positive public image for CECC. Right now, uh, we have social media and web and a website, but we do not have a dedicated resource to maintain either. Um, it's something that. I'm having to use my shelter staff um, in doing as well as several others. And so for consistency purposes and a person that will help in um, creating that positivity and consistency, I need a dedicated resource for that. I just don't have it. Do you consider that a full-time position? I would like it to be a full-time position. But it's an ask. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Is that something that, say, you know, if we contracted out with a photographer or something like that, instead of having them actually, you know, work for just the shelter, like, you know, a, just a, a private photographer that kind of freelances on the side but comes in, you know, takes the pictures of the dogs and everything, and it's also good with social media type stuff, is that something that could also be an option, or we just want someone full-time in the shelter? Well, I am open to any uh, possibility uh, in that aspect, because it is new, 
And so any suggestions would definitely be welcomed. I just know I need someone. So uh, that's why I went ahead and requested it in this budget. Uh, but it definitely could be something we contract out. I would still need the funding for it, though. I might be getting a cart before the horse here, mm -hmm. but um, with this, uh, like the request and everything, I know it's always like a wish list of what we want versus what we're actually going to get. Um, is there like an order of importance? You know what I mean? Like, right. I mean, I know you would probably rather have, you know, more animal control officers versus maybe the public relations. You know, is there a, is there like an order of importance for the on requests or the way it, that I have it written? No, it's not. But there is a. There okay. Is yes. The way it's presented to the council for approval, will they? How do they approve? Like individual things or do they just give a lump amount and you decide where it goes? No. So it's a line item. If okay. it's if it's identified as this is what it's for, then that's what I'll have to use it for. Okay. 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 It's just not going to be there. No. Gotcha. Can I keep my side back? Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I think what you're asking is in the final process, how does it work? Mm -hmm. Animal control falls under public works. It will be the public works department's budget that will go before the council. Mm -hmm. In that budget, there are 14 divisions. So as a director, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to prioritize based on the department need. Then we go down to the divisional need. So does that give you an idea mm -hmm. of, of the things? And that's when I say departmental need, I mean for the entire city, mm -hmm. not just for the city. Okay. And I, I know sometimes you have to, thank you for clarifying, mm -hmm. but I know sometimes you have to, you know, be creative with stuff too. Mm -hmm. If, um, <laughs> you know, no, I mean, because, well, I mean, I know that, like, the, the cleaning stuff keeps hitting the table, you know, with the questions and everything, so I was just looking through here, but, so, like, just say that you only got, like, four of these positions, could that maybe change what some people's duties are to address, like, whatever in the shelter has training. been identified as like, you know, let's just say that the cleaning is yeah. an area because I see it in two different ones that's like, okay, we need help in this area. So if you didn't get like the maintenance workers, mm -hmm. could that possibly, but you got five animal control officers, could that possibly change some of their duties as far as helping within the building or do you not? Yes, absolutely. Like job job description, uh, well, this is the word I'm looking for. He was absolutely correct. Everybody in that division should be cross-trained to do everybody else's job. Mm -hmm. So that if you're short shelter staff, mm -hmm. you can pull from the field if you need to, okay. to fulfill those positions. So everyone that can be, should be cross-trained mm -hmm. to be able to do different duties. <coughs> Thank you. I just maybe I'm speaking on terms. No, I don't think it's just with as short as you've been in the field, and I don't think that was ever a possibility. Right, before. yeah. yeah. Right. It, it, she's more about that too. Good questions. Um, we are requesting a full time veterinarian. Currently, what we have is a uh, part time veterinarian, but we are looking for someone to be committed to um, animal control. We uh, recent we are in the process of putting out an RFP. I don't know when that will be released, but we have created that. We're also requesting a veterinarian surgery tech. And um, the volunteer coordinator space currently is a full-time position for one. We're requesting for two co-coordinators who will be part-time employees splitting that load workload. So you would eliminate the coordinator and just have two co-coordinators? Right. The others that you see are line items for different uh, areas uh, for overtime, contractual services. Um, we're asking for increases in those amounts, most of which is because we have increased either our personnel or there's been an increase in um, the costs. And you'll see that mostly, uh, mostly in fuel um, 
as well as in uniforms and parts for our vehicles. Um, one thing I'm not seeing that it may have been on um, last year's submission or not, um, the, we've talked about a new software for the... Mm -hmm. It's on um, here? It's on here? Services, yes, it's contractual services. Um, okay. In addition to those line items, um, I've also asked for um, what is considered a capital improvement plan request. I'm asking for a surgical suite, specifically for spay and neuter. Um, the reason I'm asking for that is um, right now it is no secret, our voucher program is what we currently have in place. Um, the problem with the voucher program is one, it requires a an exorbitant amount of time for my officers to follow up to make sure that those animals that are adopted out, that are intact, following up with those new owners to make sure that they have uh, followed through with the voucher uh, of getting them altered. Um, in addition to that, it is also not very effective. Mm -hmm. right. no, it's Bottom line, it's not. not. And so, uh, the goal has always been to any for any animal that comes in and that is adopted out is to have that animal altered before it leaves. And this way we'll be able to guarantee that. Is the voucher still for the fifty dollars that yes. it always was? The voucher is still for fifty dollars so, so the so the majority of the veterinarians do won't take it. it. Yeah. Or they'll take it in conjunction to additional additional. And so um, the incentive a lot of times is that they don't get it done or there is no incentive for them to get it done. <clears throat> so that's one of the reasons we want to institute or at least have the actual suite created. I have a question on that. Mm -hmm. That may not be thought of, but do you, um, do you have any plans and or desire to do public animals out of that or just in-house? So yes, the, the goal is to eventually have it to where we are going to expand that program, not just for animals that we take in, but provide that service to our public as well. Including as a microchip services at one point, 500 microchips were donated. Well, yeah. we, we yeah. actually got 250. Okay, 250. Um, but we are working on, there is another uh, in here, a line item, for a fee-based program that is um, the microchip services. Um, we want to eventually provide that service throughout the city as well. There will be a grant that I'll be applying for that comes up in February from the Department of uh, Agriculture where it, uh, they will grant you the monies to do that in this city -wide. Any questions? Well, are any of the animals sterilized before they leave the facility at this point? No. Okay. Uh, in your proposal mm -hmm. for the veterinarian, did you increase their pay? Yes, then I did. You did. Um, A lot of competition for that. It is quite. And that's not, the competition is not just in this city or state, it's nationwide. So um, we have put in competitive pricing for that. Because that has been a big thing. It's not just a really big yeah. But the lack of availability for service? No, um, looking for a for a bit. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had to increase the, you know, what they have been, what we're offering mm -hmm. as far as selling yeah. 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 For someone to even be interested in. You know. That concludes um, 
my uh, my agenda items. If they do, if you do have any questions later on, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm always available. Okay. Okay. All right. um, next, Robbie, we have you um, in place of Shan for. Uh, she was. I feel stupid that I don't have something formulated from what she, she was kind of telling me uh, through text uh, what she was talking about. Uh, uh, there was, she was concerned about the number, of the uh, whether or not all of the dogs that get uh, euthanized were sedated first. Uh, and supposedly it's supposed to be mandatory or, or uh, Georgia law that they get uh, sedated first. So, am I understanding that right? No, sir. Okay. So, um, Dr. Hall actually spoke at the um, council meeting and he did share that the tranquilization of uh, before euthanizing was uh, a choice. It was not a requirement. It's an option, not a requirement. And it just depended on the animal that was being uh, euthanized. Uh, one of the things that came out of that, and I don't, I'm not a veterinarian, I'm just going to go by, um, if I'm, I don't want to quote or misquote, so I'm not going to go into detail, but one of the things that he did mention was the reason that tranquilizing was not always an option was because um, some of the animals were seized. And so, um, it was it was at the discretion of the doctor. I think I think one of the optics involved with that is that uh, we we all want the animals to go peacefully, mm -hmm. um, and an effort should be made on whoever's doing the deed to get them as calm as possible, whether they use a um, sedative or not because uh, we don't want them to be freaking out or having a terrible time of it. I realize that <clears throat> using the sedative is frequently uh, for owners that want to be there with their with their babies and, and stay there for a few minutes with them. And I understand why it wouldn't be 100%. But the, the overall thing is to make sure they're peacefully done. Because the, having them frantic is just so inhumane. I mean, I've, I've been there with Dr. Yeah. Hall when he actually came to my house during COVID for a yeah. hospice case we had yeah. that was, that, it was a hard stick to put yeah. down. I mean, and even though it was the humane thing to do without that tranquilizer, yeah. I mean, but, I, there's no way I could have yeah. even co signed on it. And I'm, I'm just, I'm yeah. just speaking from personal experience yeah. on that. That's what I, that's um, what I, I mean, and he, he did talk me through the whole process. And once, once the dog was tranquilized, I mean, she was so out, you could have performed probably a, mild surgical procedure yeah. on me. She was that out. And so that brought me peace. But yeah. I will say to think about a dog getting a heart stick without that, I mean, it, it, it turns my stomach. It, yeah. it does. And I'm just, you know, I'm I'm just being honest. On and that there's some that. dogs that, that are, are low-key enough and, and well adjusted I mean, I don't even enough. know if you could be low-key enough to get a needle stuck in your well, heart. But that's, I, just, that's just me. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. you know. I don't know what the situation is. I don't want to see it, but uh, and I'm not projecting my thoughts on other people. I just think it's the main way to do it is to keep it as smooth and as low key as possible. And if it has to have sedation every time, then that's the route to go. But um, it was said here that uh, it's all done intravenously. That's right. It we is. don't do heart scans. Okay, that's so what was said here. That's right. 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 We don't do heart scans. But ever? That's mm -hmm. no. I know Dr. Hall does, because yes. he came to my house. Dr. Hall does. Okay. Our staff do intravenous on mm -hmm. We do not do oh, our okay. mm -hmm. Even when Francis and the old crew were here, they did so not do did, So if we get that question from, you know, because we do get questions mm -hmm. from the public, so if somebody asks us, do any. I just want to make sure that I yeah. quote correctly. So if anybody asks us if any animals that animal control of being euthanized with a heart stick, and our answer is not a heart stick. No. Not a heart stick. Thought, you know, when it okay. comes, I always thought, you know, when it comes to tiny kittens or tiny puppies, then I'm really, really sick or, you know, where it is humane to let it go, mm -hmm. that heart stick. 
I'm saying I, I don't know, you know, because you couldn't find it. As often as I've all. been back there, I've never seen that done. Which brings me to the second branch of Shannon's discussion, the, talking about puppies and everything. She's concerned about the parvo and what is the specific policy in place to have a parvo when it happens. You have a, uh, the, supposedly there, what I've been told is there have been some parvo uh, cases that came from the playground back there. I don't know, I mean the play yard behind the building, and I don't know how that uh, germ works, on whether it can transmit that way or what? So, um, I, I'm not, I, I don't know anything about that. Okay, but what is your procedure for, for parvo breakouts when puppies so, come in? So you don't even control over that. No, right? we don't. Parvo, um, we, right now, particularly with our puppies um, that come in, we keep them in, um, away from our main areas. Uh, particularly, uh, if they're coming in with their mom, we isolate them off or they stay in the salad court until they do have a, a bowel movement so that we can see whether or not they have parvo. But we keep those puppies separated. They're not put in the main ones at all. And once they recover or move out, whatever the reason, is that area sanitized very well afterwards because yes. it's really contagious? Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And you need to and that uh, parvo is also a state required reported outbreak. It's not correct. something that we can just not do. We have yeah. to do it. And because of that, um, because of the concerns, the overwhelming concerns, we even had the, uh, our inspector to come in. She gave us an in-service on the correct, the correct protocols. She actually went back to make sure that we were following those. And so uh, we've taken every uh, opportunity to ensure that what we are doing is correct and definitely in the lines of the uh, Department of Ag. I don't, uh, from what I understand, that's all Shannon was interested in, the euthanasia and the parko. Um, so I hope she's not going to yell at me for forgetting something. <laughs> she's she had a right to. She's been through a lot this week. Yeah. Oh, there was one more thing, you know, the Sally port in the back where the vehicles come in and out. Is there a possibility to get a heater back there? It gets really, really cold. It can be on the 2026 mm -hmm. budget. 2026 budget. Yeah, that is cold in there. Mm -hmm. It's it, I've been back there. You know, it's, it's very very cold and often because the doors are open. Yeah. And I'm sure they mm -hmm. have like standards mm -hmm. and things. You know. Like, mm -hmm. Okay. See what we can do about that. But of course, as you know, all of the, as far as the main runs, oh, I know runs, the, the, the floors, floors, are floors heated. are heated. No, no, just at every affected. Okay. Are the floors on the side of the mm -hmm. No. no. Mm -hmm. It's just like a little concrete. But I've sat on those before. They're cold, but that main run will get you burning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sit down May and we'll get you going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was all of our um, agenda items. Was there anything anybody wanted to add? Meeting adjourned. Yeah.